Welcome to another Raider Power Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson, and I'm happy to have Joe Yeager with me for another, for another edition. Uh, we have a lot of questions. Y'all sent us a record amount of questions this week, so we're going to dive right into it. Um, the first one comes from John Galt, 4TT. Uh, Joe, I'll let you uh, handle this because I know you had some impressions about the special teams in Midland. Um, the question is, what is the new special teams coach doing, uh, Darren Chivarini, uh, to correct the multiple flaws in the punt return game, especially um, the punt returners' problem, uh, problems with fielding the ball, you know, in the air. Well, I mean, you know, first off, the weather played a factor in this because there was there were some gusty winds and uh, swirling back and forth, and the sun was in the eyes of the punt returners and everything. Now they're not going to use that as an excuse, but it was clearly a factor. Uh, but, I mean, those guys are going to have days like that during the season, too, where they're going to have adverse conditions they have to deal with, so they have to find somebody uh, who first can feel punts reliably. I mean, that's the main thing. If you, I don't care how good you return the thing. If you can't grab it to start off with, you're not going to play. So, chevrini has got his, you know, his coaching techniques that he's going to work on, and he's going to keep on working on that stuff. But if guys continue to have problems fielding punts, and then it's going to be a personnel issue where they start looking for new punt returners is basically what it comes down to. Uh, Jordan Davis and Brent Mitchum have, have either got to start doing the job or he's going to find somebody else to do it. Yeah, that would be my next question. Do you think the punt returner is already here that we're going to see in the fall, or do you think it's going to be one of the summer guys like Sadler or maybe even Batson? Or, uh, there's several several guys who, who can do it. Do you think that the guy's already on, on campus, or do you think it's going to be the sum, uh, one of the guys arriving this summer? Well, if the Midland performance was any indication, then uh, the newcomers have got a real shot at it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's still a little bit early, so we'll see what happens. All right, next question comes from Mount Home Raider. He wants to know, uh, what do you think about this? is a good question because um, I've seen uh, Rodney Hall really stand out uh, this spring. Basically, do you think he's going to be a situational player, Joe, or do you think uh, he's going to be a guy who's going to get some serious run uh, this fall? Well, uh, there's a lot of situations that he may be playing in. <laughs> you know, so being a situational guy may not be too bad. Um, you know, I think that after the scrimmage down in Midland, uh, Kingsbury said that he really, really likes Rodney Hall and what he's doing and that he's going to play a lot. And I don't have any reason not to believe him. Um, so I think he probably wants to, like Tuberville, um, uh, add a more physical dimension, dimension to the ground game, and Hall is a part of that. And we'll see if he's a little bit more successful than Tuberville was. Yeah, I have to say, just my two cents on it was I saw a lot of subscribers uh, clamoring for it on the site, and I was just kind of shrugged at it like, you know, who cares? I'd rather see the, the all-around, the three-tool back, uh, more of the receiver of the backfield. But after seeing Hall in practice just a little bit, just a glimpse, I gotta say, it looks pretty sweet having that big dude back there uh, to you know bring the hammer a little bit yeah, uh, in certain on, situations. No yeah. That, yeah. Uh, next question comes from Border Boy Twenty Six, and he wants to know um, basically about Sean Corker. Uh, he felt like you know he was kind of lightning in the bottle la last year, but then through injuries and other things, he didn't you know. Uh, just the depth at, at that position last year, he didn't really get a shot. Joe, do you think he's gonna? Uh, we're gonna see him a lot this fall, or, or not? Well, yeah, that guy's had a lot of problems to deal with, and not only that, but he was switched to defense yeah. uh, and played DB for a while earlier in his career. And some of those guys, it just happens, you know, every so often, uh, they just can't seem to catch a break, and it's bad luck and one thing or another circumstances dictate that they they just never really rise to the fore. And now he's got one year less left yeah. uh, so it's you know it's possible I don't see him as being a huge factor on offense uh, but he could be a good serviceable backup who can get in there and re reliably make a play from time to time you know sure I could I agree I could see that um, we got some basketball questions here um, Motor City Titans fans uh, he has two of them two really good questions um, that I, I, I know that you would like to answer uh, with Jordan Tolbert transferring and uh, Basically, the, the hole with him leaving, who do you think is going to step up? Do you think the guy's already on the roster? Do you think it's going to be Aaron Ross, uh, F Alex Foster, or is it going to be one of the one of the commits, one of the new guys? Well, you know, I really – first off, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people are kind of wringing their hands over Tobert transferring, and, and, and yeah. you know, I, I know that, that you've been a little bit concerned with that as well. Yeah. Um, but I honestly believe that Tech could actually be better at the power forward position next year because, first off, I think Justin Jamison yeah. uh, is, is really the real deal. I think he's got a yeah. sort of a better, more all-around polished offensive game 
uh, than Tolbert did. And Tolbert was a back to the guy, uh, to the to the basket, uh, plant down in the block, uh, and score kind of a guy. I think Jamison has more dimensions to his offensive game, yeah. uh, and I think and he's a, kind of a space eater too. I mean, six yeah. nine and two sixty, and to have somebody like that at a power forward position who also has mobility. Um, I mean, that, that's a good thing, and he's got some springs as well. Yeah. He can really get off the ground quickly. And don't count out uh, Alex Foster as well because now Tolbert was a very good rebounder, and you don't want to lose that rebounding. But Alex Foster is a guy who I think if he plays enough, uh, he can make a real difference and really help out on the glass. And I think you're going to see him improve. And between him and Jamison, uh, that's going to be a fairly good one-two punch. You know, the thing about Tolbert that I disagree with, and Tubby Smith said it, you know, obviously he knows a lot more about basketball than I do, and I hear you say it, that Tolbert was a good rebounder, and I just don't see it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, can't tell you how many times during the season where I said, you know, there he is, he didn't block out, he got beat for, for a rebound, and, you know, it, it led to a huge swing. Yeah, should, you know? yeah. I mean, he averaged, what, five to six rebounds yeah, for his career. I mean, and for your power forward, you're gonna need, you need more rebounding than that. Yeah, um Next question, also from Motor City uh, Titans fans, wants to know about, uh, do you think Keenan Evans is good enough? I don't know if you've seen him enough, but do you think he's good enough to be a rotation guy? Or is he more, or is Randy O and obviously uh, Robert Turner going to keep him on the bench? Well, I mean, I think initially, and really realistically, uh, probably for the entire season, uh, Robert Turner probably will be the starter. I mean, he's not the ideal solution by any stretch of the imagination. He's not a true point guard, um, but he did okay for for yeah. a guy who who is being you know squeezed into a position, a position that is not natural for him. Uh, he he did pretty well, and I expect he will improve at the position. But I also think that Keenan Evans can come in and really really help out as a, as a very solid backup, and his minutes will probably increase as the season goes along. And as far as on Wasser goes, uh, I honestly do not see him staying at the point guard position. I think uh, he's definitely not a natural one. Uh, I think his main role on the team next year will be as a defensive stopper. I think he can be a very good uh, perimeter defender, kind of like Todrick Gocher, um, and do some work there. But um, I think it's going to be um, Robert Turner for the most part with some good help from Keenan Evans. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think Evans is going to help. The whole situation is going to help Turner, spell Turner some. Like you said, Randy O is going to move over more to his natural position, two guard, defensive stopper, and slasher. I mean, I think that got taken away a lot from him because he, you know, he was trying to handle the ball. Uh, so I think that's really going to help his development as well. And Joe, we have another basketball question. This one is from Ray Rody. Um, assuming that we have two uh, scholarships to give in November, um, what positions should Tech go for, and how high should they aim? Um, well, I mean, one thing that I've noticed from this NCAA tournament uh, is that uh, virtually every team that has done reasonably well in the tournament plays really, really good defense, okay? Yeah. But the thing that really separates the great teams, the ones that make a serious run in the NCAA tournament, is having two or three guys who can score yeah. against that really tough defense. And so I think uh, we've seen that Tubby can coach pretty good defense. But what this team really is going to need to to take it, you know, two or three steps up is they're going to have to find two or three guys who can really score. And I don't care so much if you're talking about bombers or slashers or probably a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, but but he's got to find some people who can shake loose and score some points. So that's probably you looking at a you know another off guard, um, uh, small forward type of a guy. And as far as where you set your sights. Um, you know, I think realistically, in, in, for the next recruiting cycle, you're still playing on the results of this past season, which were an improvement and were better, yeah. but were still not great enough to cause a, a, a tremendous recruiting breakout. I think before, you're going to have to see Tech have a really good season on the court before you, that really sort of manifests itself in recruiting. So, you know, uh, another s solid couple of players, and you have a good year next year, and then the year after that, the recruiting really takes off. Good stuff. And that's going to do it for this edition of the RaiderPower.com mailbag. Joe, thanks for joining right, me. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us.